How's it going guys? Today we have a long requested recipe. It's red velvet cake. We're gonna make them in cupcakes though. We're gonna start with the dry ingredients. We're gonna do this the official baking way. You do dry ingredients first, all mixed together in a bowl. So this is almond flour. This is one and a half cups. Here we have coconut flour. This is three tablespoons. Texture is a lot better when you use a little bit of each. And then here we have some erythritol. This is one half cup. So my whole game when I'm using sweeteners for desserts is using as little erythritol as possible. So this is more for like the standard palette. If I was making this for myself, I would use less erythritol, more stevia. I like to use a lot of stevia, but some people, once you start up in the stevia too much, they get the aftertaste and they don't like it. If you're just starting keto, you'll probably like it more with more erythritol. And then two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And that's the thing with the red velvet cake is it's basically just a chocolate cake and then you put red food coloring in it. So no real reason to add the red food coloring, but we're gonna do it anyway. Then we're gonna do two teaspoons of baking powder, one half teaspoon of baking soda, I really have no idea what baking soda does. Mega says baking soda is a leavening agent. And then just some pink salt, maybe a quarter to a half teaspoon. Salt is surprisingly important when you're doing chocolate desserts. It really brings out the flavors. So that is our dry ingredients. We can just really quickly mix it all together and we're gonna set this aside and we're gonna work on the wet ingredients. We have a half cup of butter. We're gonna melt this in the microwave really quickly. Okay, so our butter is melted and we're gonna be using a hand mixer to combine the wet and the dry ingredients. But to further complete the wet ingredient mixture here, we're gonna do 50 drops of liquid stevia, or you can measure it out, it's a half teaspoon. Now, if you were making it the way I would make it for myself, maybe I'd do like a quarter cup of erythritol, maybe 70 drops of stevia. We're gonna add two teaspoons of vanilla. Have you guys checked the vanilla prices lately? If you would have invested in vanilla in the 70s, you'd be a millionaire right now. And then kind of a signature thing for red velvet cakes is this distilled white vinegar or just any kind of white vinegar. I guess it's hard to describe the flavor that this gives to the red velvet cake, but it's just kind of like the signature red velvet flavor that you're used to. It's what sets it apart from like a standard chocolate cake. We're gonna do two teaspoons of white vinegar. I feel like you could probably use rice vinegar too. I don't know. Probably not. Maybe not. No, don't, don't, definitely don't do that. And then lastly, we have this red food color. This is the bad stuff. We couldn't find the natural kind. Ideally, you wanna use natural food color because this stuff just has a lot of chemicals in it. You can usually find a more natural one on Amazon. We just didn't have time. We wanted to do this recipe today. I've made red velvet cakes before and unless you're literally pouring this entire bottle into the cake, it doesn't turn the color you see when you go to like bakeries and stuff. So in my opinion, just enough to, to set it apart from a chocolate cake is all you really want to do. So I'm just going to do a teaspoon of the red coloring and it's not actually going to make it very red in the end. I'm just gonna give this a quick mix and then we're gonna add the eggs. Now uh, six eggs. Ideally you want these at room temperature. I wonder what the origin of red velvet cake is. It'd probably be interesting to learn about. Like why it was red initially and like what did they use to originally make it red? Probably like beets or something. Do you think they use beets? Yeah. You know what would have been an awesome story if there was like a beet farmer named Andre and then he sued Dr. Dre for Beats by Dre and just like took all his money. He's like, I've had this beet farm for hundreds of years. This is the original Beats by Dre. Okay, now just blend this together. And I'm gonna add the dry ingredients in two parts here. So add half of it. Then let's do the rest. And then check out the consistency here. This is pretty thick. This is gonna make a nice cupcake. Okay, so now I have the silicone mold. I'm gonna use some muffin liners just to make them look nicer. You don't need to use those. Now we're just gonna evenly distribute the batter into all of these muffin tins here, about three fourths of the way up. That's too much. This actually turned out redder than I expected. All my experiences with food coloring is like, it just makes it turn pink and gross. That's actually one of the things I think about sometimes when you go to like a traditional bakery or a restaurant, like the only goal for them is to get you coming back. So like sugar, red food coloring, like whatever it takes, they're just gonna do it, you know? They don't really have too much concern for health. It'd be delicious, it's yeah. very great. I guess that's the point, <laughs> you're right. 
Okay, those look pretty good. I'm gonna flatten them out a little bit. Cupcakes are all filled up. We're gonna pop these in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes at 350 degrees. Now it's time to make everyone's favorite part of a red velvet cake. It's the cream cheese frosting. If it's not, I mean it is. There's literally zero people that are like, I like the cake, not the frosting. Cream cheese frosting, gross. Said no one ever. Did you guys like that? The said no one ever thing? Tactically, it can be quite funny, but it's overused for sure. So we're doing cream cheese frosting and we have one stick of room temperature, a little bit melted. You don't want it melted, you just want a room temperature. Butter, and we're gonna use an entire package here of cream cheese. Don't get the lower fat cream cheese, of course. Get the full fat. The Philadelphia kind is what I would recommend. But yeah, we're gonna use this whole stick. There we go. We're gonna use a teaspoon of vanilla. The salt of dessert, that's what I like to call it. We're gonna do one tablespoon of heavy cream just to thin it out slightly. And we're gonna use, again, a half cup of erythritol. This time it's powdered. I like to just use powdered for everything, but definitely when you're doing frostings, you wanna use powdered, or else you can kind of taste the like grittiness of the erythritol. And again, this is something I'd probably reduce and use more stevia if I was making it for myself. And then we're gonna do 20 drops of liquid stevia. Finally, we're just gonna mix this all together and turn it into frosting. <laughs> And it's as simple as that. This is a pretty much all purpose frosting. You can use this to top any other kind of recipe for cupcakes you might have, any kind of cake. So we are gonna put this in the fridge actually. And then we're also gonna let the cupcakes cool down. They're gonna take like probably 30 minutes. You don't wanna ice them while they're still warm. All right guys, we're back. It's been about 45 minutes. And I actually put two of these in the fridge so I could ice them so they cool a little bit quicker. But here's what they all look like. You know, they all baked up pretty nicely. They rise a little bit and yeah, they're actually just like a really nice soft texture like you would expect cupcakes to be. So I got my icing here and I'm just gonna ice one up and then give it a try. So I'm not really good at icing. You can do a piping bag, but I actually kind of think there's some beauty in just the handheld icing jobs that you see, like bake sale style. You guys remember bake sales? Like I need 50 cents so I can because everything was like a dollar or 50 cents. It's so cheap, I know. I feel like now when our kids have bake sales, it's gonna be like like 650, you know? Yeah. Like, but it'll also be like gluten-free and yeah. low carb. And Here we go. It's really red. Yeah, it's pretty red actually. Mm, the cream cheese icing, it's so good. Nice and chocolatey. You get the back and forth, the one-two punch, the cream cheese, the chocolate, the red dye number 40, I'm kidding. But overall, really good. What you'd expect from a red velvet cake? Yeah, but comment below with other cakes and stuff you want us to try. We'll give it our best shot. The link on how to make this, the full recipe description, and even a blog post written by Mega is in the description of this video below. Check out all our other recipes. We got probably like 50 dessert recipes by now. They're all pretty good. And that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching.